1994, the Southern Poverty Law Center began investigating white supremacist activity within the anti-government militia movement and sent a letter warning U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno of the danger posed by militias. Six months later, at 9.02 a.m. on April 19, 1995, a bomb exploded in front of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. 168 people were killed. Among them were federal employees and children aged 1 to 7 at an on-site daycare center. A FEMA worker told the Associated Press that destruction was so great, it reminded him of the 6.9 magnitude earthquake in Kobe, Japan earlier that year. Being only two years after the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, media outlets, including CBS, CNN, and the New York Times, were quick to look at the Middle East for an act of international terrorism. Obviously, no amateur did this, then Governor Frank Keating said. He was right. The Oklahoma City bombing would become central to a number of conspiracy theories that went on to energize extremists like radio host Alex Jones and the anti-government movement at large. The man later convicted on 11 federal counts of murder, conspiracy, and using a weapon of mass destruction in the blast was Timothy McVeigh, a U.S. Army veteran who stockpiled weapons and read military training manuals in his spare time. His co-conspirator, Terry Nichols, was convicted by the state of Oklahoma on 161 counts of murder. The two men met when they were both training at Fort Benning. McVeigh had read The Turner Diaries, a racist dystopian novel published in 1978, whose main character is a member of a white supremacist insurgent group that uses terrorist attacks to trigger a race war, culminating in the main character's suicide bombing with a nuclear attack on the Pentagon. It's a novel that inspired extremist violence from the 1980s through the 1990s including the Oklahoma City bombing and the violence carried out by the neo-Nazi hate group The Order, whose members participated in a shootout with the FBI near Seattle in 1984 and were responsible for the assassination of a Jewish radio host in Denver in 1987. After McVeigh left the army, he traveled around the U.S eventually stopping in Waco, Texas, to watch the 1993 ATF raid on the Branch Davidian compound unfold. Like so many other anti-government extremists, he directed his rage about that raid at the federal government. A friend of Terry Nichols was familiar with McVeigh. He got really upset with Waco, to where he got a burning rage inside, Philip Morosky told the Tulsa World. The combination of burning rage and far-right ideology helped plant the bomb that killed 168 people in Oklahoma City in 1995. At the time of the attack, the anti-government extremist movement was closely aligned with the white supremacist movement. The following year, SPLC counted 858 anti-government extremist groups the highest number until the Obama presidency. Now decades in the past, the Oklahoma City bombing's legacy is critical to understanding the extremist movements of today.